Who, me? Yep, yep, always wanted to do that. The chemise, shift, underdress, what you will, the loose-fitting garment worn underneath outer attire. The shape and construction of the chemise has indeed changed through the years, but the broad and basic definition is a fairly loose-fitting garment made of few pieces to wear underneath and in some cases as outerwear. I find every era of the chemise quite beautiful, but for the moment I'd like to focus on just one era, or else this video will be far too long, and that era is the Italian Renaissance. This basic pattern is still used today in costuming as well as in modern fashion, so whether you're wanting to create a look to wear at the Renaissance Festival, a stage costume, or even if you want to make something more modern, this basic pattern can possibly be of use to you. I used one pattern to make several different chemises with just some slight modifications to the pattern. You can use the same pattern and make bigger modifications to make something extra different, but we'll save that for another time. We already have the basic shapes, the next thing to do is figure out the dimensions for you. Measure around the bust. The bust measurement is what you'll use to determine how wide to make the top of the piece. When all the pieces are sewn together, it should be roughly double the circumference of your bust. So since there will be two pieces and each one is on the fold, this section here should be your bust measurement divided by four. Shoulder to floor. The shoulder to floor measurement tells you how long it should be. Be sure to add a few inches for seam and hem allowances loosely around your arm. You can double this as well, or up to two and a half times if you like very voluminous sleeves. But since it is on a fold, remember to divide that number that you come up with in half. Shoulder to wrist. This tells you the almost length for a long sleeve. Be sure to add an extra three to four inches for poof and seam allowance, and possibly a ruffle. These measurements are rough estimates. You'll figure out what works best as you go, depending on your preferences and the type of fabric you use. For my first look, I used a tablecloth I found at the thrift store, and the fabric felt like a linen cotton blend. It was so nice to work with, it made up for the stains, which you can hardly see anyway. I cut out two pieces on the fold for front and back. Figuring out the sleeve was a little bit tricky. The sleeve length was determined by how much fabric I had left, which is one of the prices you have to pay for using thrifted items. Sometimes you just have to figure out how to make it work with what you've got. So I cut out really short sleeves. That's what my front and back pieces looked like, and the sleeves, I cut out two of each on the fold. I then laid the front and back pieces on top of each other, right sides facing, and stitched up the side seams. The sleeves were next, folded them in half, and stitched up the side seams as well, which were considerably shorter. Once the side seams are sewn, what you'll have are some U-shapes on the chemise body and on the sleeves. What you'll do is match the seams, match the U-shapes, pin together, and stitch. Then it's time to gather up the neckline with the help of some elastic. <sighs> I pressed the top edge under the width of the elastic plus a quarter inch all the way around. Then I stitched the seam all the way around, leaving a little opening for the elastic to go through. Then I sent the elastic through. Before finalizing it all and sewing the ends of the elastic together, I gave it a good try on to make sure it was comfortable and it would sit around my neck, but also could be pulled over my shoulders. Once I determined that, I stitched together the ends of the elastic and closed up that little gap. All that remained was to finish up the edges of the sleeves, which I pressed under a little bit and then stitched with a regular straight stitch. And I did the exact same thing on the hem, except I turned that one under twice, and it was finished. I actually love how it turned out. The fabric is so freaking comfortable, I may have slept in it for a few nights, but I was really feeling that to wear it out and about, it needed a little something extra. Maybe a pair of stays. For my next look, I made a peasant top blouse, which you may have seen featured in my last video. It pairs really well with a high-waisted skirt. I cut out the exact same pattern, except shorter. Well, the front and the back are a lot shorter. The sleeves are actually a little bit longer, but not much. Yep, that is actually the exact same pattern. I just folded it up underneath itself. I also ended up cutting the front down just about an inch lower on the neckline because I wanted it to be just a little bit lower. You don't have to have the front and back be identical if you don't want them to be, it's definitely easier that way, but it's totally up to you. I also used the exact same sleeve pattern and folded it up underneath itself. And there I had the front and the back and the sleeves. It was the exact same process, sew up the side seams, then match that U-shape, stitch it together, and then turn the top edge under the width of the elastic plus a quarter inch. Then stitch it into place, leaving a small gap for the elastic. Here's where things change though. I went ahead and added an elastic to the sleeves as well, so I measured around my arm to get an estimate of how long the elastic should be, measured it, cut it out, 
and threaded it through, which is just one option of how to do elastic. This is risky because you can lose the tail of the elastic pretty easily. If you're nervous about that, which I usually am because it's very frustrating, I usually cut the elastic after threading it through and trying it on. Finishing up the hem was exactly the same as last time, I just pressed it under and stitched it into place. <laughs> This next look I made out of a king size bed sheet that I found at the thrift store. It was cotton sateen and it was actually a pretty thick cotton, which I don't necessarily recommend for chemises, but I was planning on using this as a nightgown and I like the idea of it being fairly thick and soft. That's right, life hack. You don't need bed sheets, just sleep in a chemise made of bed sheets. I cut out the exact same shape but lengthened the sleeve a little bit, sewed up the side seams on the front and back, folded those sleeves in half, and stitched up the side seams. Don't do what I sometimes do, which is where I get in the zone and I lay the sleeves on top of each other and start to sew them together just like the front and the back. Unless you want to make a chemise for a doll, you could do that. Match up the U-shapes, pin, and sew them. Here's where it gets a little bit different because we're going to add a ruffle to the top edge and the sleeves. I turned the top edge under about one and one quarter inches, pressed it, pinned it all the way around. I then stitched very closely to the edge, but I didn't close up that line, I left a little gap, and then I stitched a new line half an inch away from that first stitching line, and did not leave a gap this time. That would create a channel for the elastic, allowing that section on top to ruffle. I gave it a good press to make sure that ruffle would be nice and crispy, and then I sent the elastic through, and then closed up that gap. And I did the exact same thing for the sleeves. A basic hem, I just turned it under a couple times, pressed it, and stitched it into place. I feel like flipping Juliet. just lean on my balcony, dreaming of no one passing by. Seriously, if someone were eavesdropping on me while I was talking to myself and interrupted me, I would not devote the rest of my life to them. That's just, that's not the way to win friends and influence people. Okay, that's not the way to win me and influence me. That is the way to make me dislike you. It's rude, okay? It's rude eavesdropping on someone when they're having a private conversation with themselves. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Just needed to get that out. Love the play, though. Love that play. Now I can with my Rita Hayworth dreams. This isn't the best sash. I'm going to make one specifically for this, but I've always wanted this. Who, me? Yep, yep. Always wanted to do that. As fantastic as this is for sleeping in, I also wanted something much lighter weight that I could wear underneath stays. Look number four is the exact same thing as the last chemise, the only difference was shortening the sleeves. Oh, and I also used a much lighter weight fabric. So this is what the same pattern, the same steps, with shorter sleeves and a lighter weight fabric would look like. For the final look, and my personal favorite, I decided to make another blouse. Same pattern of course, just shortened it to blouse length. Now if you don't like measuring, pressing, measuring, and pressing, here's a trick I like to do. I figure out how much I'm going to turn the edge under, and then if I don't have a clear stitching line for that, I go ahead and set a piece of tape onto my sewing machine, and then I use that as a guide, and I run a basting stitch all around the top. And of course you can do this in a different color thread, which would be easier to see, and it will be coming out later, but I'm always nervous that I'm going to lose some little pieces of thread in there, and I don't really want to find little pieces of a different color thread in between the folded fabric, but it's up to you. And then I just use that as my guide and follow that when I'm pressing. 
Here's another trick for you. Something I get really frustrated about is when I go to thread the elastic through the channel, I run into a barrier, which is the seam allowance. So to avoid that problem, I go ahead and baste the seam edges down. That way the bodkin or safety pin can slide right across instead of getting caught up and driving me bonkers. I also take that basting stitch out later. It's a simple trick, but it really saves my sanity sometimes. Same thing to create the ruffles, I just stitch really close to one edge, leaving a gap, and then about half an inch away from the first stitching line to make a casing, and it creates a ruffle. So I tried it on to make sure the elastic was fitting on the arm right, and I am not loving it. I completely forgot that I don't like three quarter sleeves. They're just super awkward for me. I don't, I don't love the length. So I do want to shorten it so that it's right at the elbow. And that's what I did. I hacked off some of the sleeves. It doesn't seem like I took that much off, but I did, and it made a big difference to me. I refinished the sleeve ends, inserted the elastic, and then all I had to do was that basic hem, and it was finished.